um, vestibular schwannoma. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's a benign tumor that grows from the myelinating cells that line um, cranial nerves, usually the superior or inferior vestibular nerve, sometimes the uh, other nerves in your, your skull base. But um, the most common presentation is hearing loss. And in addition to that, even if you present for some other reason, say with dizziness or uh, a tinnitus or um, from mass effect in your brainstem causing weakness or hydrocephalus, the treatment very often is either surgery or radiosurgery, both of which carry a, a considerable risk of hearing loss. So it's a major part of the, the sort of symptomatic complex for this group of patients. And it's a big driver of quality of life, both in terms of you know, the disease and the treatment. So hi everyone, my name is uh, Christopher Graffio. I'm one of the neurosurgery chief residents here at Mayo Clinic in Rochester. One of the lead authors on a study entitled Beyond the ABCs, Hearing Loss and Quality of Life in Vestibular Schwannoma, uh, co-authored together with uh, Maria Paracelda, as well as several of my co-residents here and um, with the senior authors, uh, Dr. Colin Driscoll and Dr. Mike Link and uh, Dr. Matt Carlson from the ENT and neurosurgery departments. And the, um, the real core question we're answering here is how do patients perceive the quality of life impact of hearing loss in association with this disease? This particular study, um, it's based on a cross-sectional study, uh, or excuse me, a cross-sectional survey that was conducted several years ago in coordination with our center, uh, our partners in Bergen, Norway, um, and the uh, vestibular schwannoma, uh, rather the Acoustic Neuroma Alliance. It's a patient advocacy group that is uh, very kindly worked with us in a lot of these initiatives. And um, of the 422 patients who were initially surveyed, 390 of them had audiometric data, which is to say we could objectively assess what's the quality of their hearing. And then we could correlate that or do association studies looking at how does the, the objective hearing loss uh, so an audiogram is a test that an audiologist performs and they do two different things. They, they check your word recognition. So out of a hundred words, for example, or a percentage of a hundred words, sometimes more than that are tested. Um, how many of them are you able to accurately discriminate? And then a pure tone average, which is uh, a single note basically at a particular frequency, um, a series of frequencies. It's a, the test is more elaborate, but um, what's, the, what's the lowest threshold of, of sound that you're able to, to hear. So those are sort of the two objective parameters. And then we sent them, um, this particular survey was part of a larger battery of quality of life questions that put together some vestibular uh, schwannoma specific surveys like um, PANQUAL and uh, some more general ones like uh, the SF32. Um, and, and that's all described in the paper. You can look at the, the survey questions in detail if you check the website. but they really fell into to two or three big categories. Um, some of them are things like subjectively, do you feel like you experienced hearing loss and how severely would you rate your hearing loss? And, and others are things like, how has the hearing loss that you experience, whatever degree it is, how has that affected your quality of life in domains like, has it negatively impacted your relationships? Has it impacted your ability to use the telephone in that ear? Has it impacted your ability to uh, have conversations in public? Or are you bothered by noise? Are you bothered by um, you know, other aspects of, of the hearing loss and, and sort of hearing related domains? So in typical analyses that have looked at vestibular schwannoma in particular and hearing loss in general, um, there's a grading scale for those two objective parameters I was talking about earlier, the word recognition score and the pure tone average that puts patients into four big hearing classes, the AAOHNSF uh, hearing score scale. Uh, and so class A hearing is the best, class D hearing is the worst. And uh, in the sort of research that's been done traditionally on vestibular schwannoma and other related diseases, we've, we've referred to class A or B as serviceable hearing, which is to say it's, it's good enough to get by. You may notice some deficit, but um, there's a lot of assumptions built into that. And no one has ever really rigorously tested from the patient perspective is quality of life negatively impacted by having class B hearing, which we would still call serviceable, as compared to say class D or class, um, class C, which is uh, severely disabled, but still you have some ability to hear sounds, perhaps to localize noise only, or class D, which is uh, true deafness. And there's this rule that's uh, anecdotally mentioned, the 50-50 rule, which is to say if you can 
hear more than 50% of the words or you've got a, a 50 decibel pure tone average threshold, that that should be good enough. So the, the main questions we were trying to test here are, is that actually a true statement that, you know, your 50-50 thresholds, are those meaningful to the patient in terms of uh, the impact on their quality of life associated with objective hearing loss? And how does that also correlate with their subjective impression of, uh, did they lose hearing and how severe is it and, and so on? And the main take home findings are the most interesting and most important thing that we found here is that any degree of hearing loss that puts you beyond the class A threshold, so that's less than a 30 decibel rather than a 50 decibel hearing loss threshold on the pure tone average, or less than a 70% word recognition score, um, has a very significant impact on, on the patient's quality of life. And by contrast, the difference between class B hearing and class C hearing was not significant, with both of those being better than D. So sort of the, the biggest take home message from our paper was that if you've got class A hearing, you're doing great. Um, any hearing loss below those class A thresholds, you know, people will tolerate a, a certain degree of, of hearing loss down again to about 70% word recognition, uh, 30 decibel pure tone average, and still feel as though the impact on their quality of life is, is more moderate. Um, but beyond that, class B hearing is, is at, perceived as being at least as bad as class C for most people on average. And that it's very useful in terms of being able to counsel people, to be able to empathize with them, to be able to give them a sense when they're doing, um, you know, decision making beforehand, if they have class A hearing going into it on what they would potentially have to expect after treatment if there's a high expectation that either the disease or the treatment is going to eventually lead to hearing loss. Um, the other second very interesting finding was that these two parameters from the objective test, the word recognition score and the pure tone average, there's um, some controversy in terms of their relative utility, particularly in the neuroautology literature. And at least in this study, we found that your word recognition score is dramatically more predictive. It's a better, more reliable, more valid metric of your quality of life. So subjectively, do you think that your hearing is worse than the pure tone average is? So you could make the case that um, anyone who, who has a, a decreased word recognition score below the threshold that we identified in these tests was in the sort of 70 to 75, I think specifically 72 to 76 percent range. Anything below that, independent of even if you have a, a very good pure tone average, that will start to negatively impact your quality of life. So again, to kind of summarize, this is a cross-sectional study, um, observational data obviously, but multi-center, large sample size, uh, we used a robust sort of multivariable regression model for the, the statistical aspects of things. So we think that this is, um, you know, a high quality uh, data for that kind of an analysis. And what our real take home messages are, both any degree of meaningful hearing loss beyond class A hearing is, is very likely to have a significant negative impact uh, on patients and on their, their perceived quality of life. Um, and also that word recognition score is a better predictor uh, than pure tone average and honestly could be used on its own um, without pure tone average as, as your best sort of predictor of, of who's going to have a, an adverse quality of life outcome um, in association with their hearing loss, either from the disease or from the treatment. Thank you for reading. Thank you for listening. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, either by email or on Twitter. I'm at Graphio or uh, however else you'd like to reach out to me. But thank you for reading our paper and um, have a good day. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.